Welcome to today's webinar, Completing the ADR Recipient Report and Client Level Data Upload. And thanks everyone for joining today. My name is Debbie Eisenberg. I'm a member of the DIS team, one of several groups engaged by HAB to provide training and technical assistance to ADAPS for the AIDS Drug Assistance Program Data Report or the ADR. Before we start, I'm going to answer one of the most, oh, sorry, jumping ahead, commonly asked questions, I'll do it now, which is that the slides from today will be available on uh, Target HIV within one week and the um, recording and written Q&A is usually within two weeks. So today's webinar is presented by Richard Ali from Ryan White Data Support and Richard will review the process for completing the ADAP data report and how to upload the client level data file. Um, throughout the presentation, we will reference some resources that we think are important. And to help you keep track of these and make sure you have access to them immediately, my colleague Isia is going to chat out the link. It's in the chat right now. And it includes the location of all the resources mentioned in today's webinar. Now, at any time during the presentation, you'll be able to send us questions using the Q&A function which is on the settings bar at the bottom of your screen. And all questions will be addressed at the end of the webinar during the Q&A section. During that time, you'll also be able to ask questions live, but I'll wait to give you those instructions until we get to that part of the webinar. Today's webinar is supported by the organization shown on the slide and the contents are those of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of, nor an endorsement by, the Health Resources and Services Administration, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or the U.S. government. And now I'd like to turn things over to Richard. So Richard, take it away. Thanks, Debbie. And hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. In today's presentation, we will be going over how to complete the AIDS Drug Assistance Program Data Report, also known as the ADR. We'll first begin with an overview of the ADR and the submission timeline. Next, we'll go over completing the recipient report. Then we will go over how to upload your client level data. Following that, I will walk through how to validate and submit the ADR. Finally, We'll end the presentation by reviewing ADR webinars and additional technical assistance resources available to assist you. Let's get started. Before we move on, let's take a poll so we can know how familiar you are with the ADR. I will now pass the presentation to Isia from the DIS team to launch the poll question. Thanks, Richard. For this first poll question, we'd like to know if this is your first time working on the ADR submission. So the options are yes, this is my first time working on the ADR. No, I've submitted the ADR once or twice before. Or no, I've submitted the ADR three times or more. Looks like we have a good flow of responses coming in. So I'm going to give everyone just a few more moments. Go ahead and end the poll and share out those results. So it looks like a majority, 66%, this is their first time working on the ADR. We have 22% who have submitted the ADR once or twice before. And then 13% <clears throat> indicated they submitted the ADR three times or more, Richard. Thanks, Isia. It's great to see all of you here today. And if you're new to this process, welcome to the ADR. We hope that this step-by-step -step presentation will help make things smoother for you. And for everyone who has submitted the ADR more than once, this webinar will be a great refresher and hopefully can also shed some light on any challenges you may have had in past submissions. So let's do a quick overview of the ADR submission. The ADR consists of the recipient report and the client report. The recipient report covers data based on the Part B grant year reporting period, which is April 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023. The recipient report includes two parts, the recipient information and programmatic summary. 
The client report includes client level data for clients enrolled into ADAP in the 2022 calendar year. The data are reported as an XML file that includes one record for every client, regardless of if they received ADAP services or not during the reporting period. We will go over each of these reports a little more later in the presentation. Now let's review the submission timeline. All the important dates that you should keep in mind. Monday, April 3rd, the ADR web system officially opened, so you can now start working on your ADR. Hopefully you have started to look at your data and have been using the check your XML feature, which opened March 1st. We also strongly encourage you to upload your data by Monday, April 24th, so that you have enough time to review your data and make any needed corrections. We also encourage you to start working on the recipient report. It includes fiscal information that takes some time to compile. All ADRs must be in submitted status on Monday, June 5th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Here we have resources to help assist you with the 2022 ADR submission. I hope that all of you are aware by now that there are two changes in the reporting requirements for the client report. The data element recertification dates has been changed to last date of eligibility confirmation. It is required for all existing clients whose enrollment status as of the end of the reporting period was not disenrolled. Only one date, the most recent date, should be reported. We also have the return of the data element medication days where ADAPS will report the number of days for each medication dispensed to a client during the reporting period. You can find more information about these changes in the ADR and Focus document, the fall webinar, and the ADR instruction manual. Now that we have gone over some background information, let's begin with how to complete the recipient report. ADAPS will first need to access the ADR through the HRSA electronic handbooks also known as the HRSA EHBs. After logging in, you will need to hover your mouse over the Grants tab at the top of the page. From here, a drop-down menu will appear and you will click on Work on Performance Reports under the Submissions header. After click on the Work on Performance Reports link, you will be navigated to the Submissions All page where you will see a list of submissions for your organization, including your organization's most recent RSR submission. From this page, scroll down to locate your 2022 ADR performance report under the submission name header. Once you have located the 2022 ADR submission, you will select edit under the options header. However, if this is your first time accessing the report, this option will say start. After clicking either start or edit, you will be taken to the ADR inbox where you should see your organization's ADR listed. To enter the report, you will click on the open link. However, if you have not started the report, this link will say create. Once you open the ADR, you will be navigated to the cover page, which is the first section of the recipient report. The cover page includes essential recipient information, including the recipient's name, grant number, and the unique entity identifier or UEI, recipient's address, and the person's contact information that is completing the recipient report. The first four items of the cover page are pre-populated from the EHBs. Therefore, if any of the information listed is incorrect, please contact the EHB's Customer Support Center to make corrections. If the UEI number is missing, you can contact Ryan White Data Support for assistance. Contact information for data support and EHB's customer support will be shown at the end of the presentation. Once you completed the cover page, make sure to click Save at the bottom of the page. To move to the next section of the recipient report, you can use the navigation panel on the left under data entry. 
The next section is the programmatic summary, which includes questions one through three. The first question of the program, program administration asks you to indicate whether your organization has adopted any control costs that are listed here on the screen. You will need to check all that apply. If you select either enrollment cap, capped number of prescriptions per month, or capped expenditure, you will be required to enter additional information. The next question of the programmatic administration section is ADAP eligibility income. For this question, you will need to enter the maximum income eligibility for participation in your ADAP, which is expressed as a percentage of the federal poverty level. Question three asks if your program has experienced an unexpected increase in enrolled clients. So if your ADAP experienced an enrollment increase you perceive as beyond normal or beyond a projected annual increase, then you would answer yes to this question. If you select yes, you will need to report how many more new clients were enrolled than you anticipated. The next section is question four, which is the purchasing mechanisms. In this section, you'll let HAB know about your drug pricing program. You will indicate whether you participate in a 340B rebate program, direct purchase, and or Department of Defense. You can check all that apply. If your Ryan White ADAP participates in the 340B prime vendor program that handles price negotiation and drug distribution responsibilities for its members, check prime vendor. If you need any clarification on any of the listed drug pricing cost saving strategies, check out page 13 of the ADR instruction manual, which provides details on each purchasing mechanism listed here. Now let's take a look at question five, which is the funding question. For question five, you are expected to enter dollar amounts of funding your ADAP received during the reporting period. If your organization did not receive the funding, please enter a zero in the box or you will get an error message. I would like to note that we receive many questions on funding every year, such as why don't I report Part B base funding or ADAP emergency relief funds? There are also guidance on reporting rebates and state matches. So we highly recommend checking out the new frequently asked question box in the ADR manual on funding located on page 16 called funding sources to report or not to report in the ADR. Once completing the funding section of the recipient report, you can move on to the next section, which is question six. For question six, you will enter the total expenditures for full pay medication assistance, dispensing costs, other administrative costs, and health insurance assistance. For other administrative costs, you will report all fees except dispensing costs that were paid by your ADAP that relate to purchasing and distributing medication like pharmacy fees and other bulk order fees. This is where you report administrative fees from your pharmacy benefits manager or insurance benefits manager. But make sure not to include any ADAP general administrative costs such as staffing costs here. If your organization does not have any expenditures for listed categories, enter a zero in the field. You cannot leave any of the responses blank. Once you click save, the total expenditures for the reporting period will be calculated automatically. The final section of the recipient report is the medication formulary section, which consists of four questions, 7, 7A, 7B, and 7C. Question 7 asks if your ADAP has an open formulary. Having an open formulary means that you cover all FDA-approved drugs, but you can have some limited exceptions. For example, someone in the previous webinar said they don't cover vaccines because of the administration fees, but they are still considered having an open formulary with that one limitation. If you're not sure about whether you have an open formulary or not, contact data support. 
questions 7A, 7B, and 7C are where you will update your organization's list of antiretrovirals in 7A, A1 medications in 7B, and hepatitis B and C medications in 7C. For those with open formularies, you have the option to click on the select all box for each question. The medications listed are also automatically populated from your last year's ADR. Please review to make sure all your medications are listed and make any updates if needed. If a medication was added to the medication formulary during the reporting period, please check the med added box and enter the date it was added. Once you have answered all questions in the medication formulary section of the report, please remember to save your data on this page. Before moving on to the client report, let's see how you are feeling about completing and submitting your ADR. I will pass the presentation to Isia for our second poll question. Thanks, Richard. So for the second poll, we'd like to know how prepared you feel for the 2022 ADR. So the options are, I'm all set and don't need any help. I may need some assistance with my recipient report, or I may need some assistance with my client report. And for this, you can select um, multiple options. I give folks a few more moments to see if anyone else wants to answer. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and I'm going to share out those results. So it looks like the majority indicated that they may need some assistance with their client report. And then it, the responses were split between I'm all set and don't need any help with at 31%. And I may need some assistance with my recipient report at 38%, Richard. Great, thank you, Isia. Data support and the DIS team are also gladly here to help you in any way we can. For those who express that you may need some help, we can reach out to you after the webinar. <clears throat> Now let's review the client level data report for the ADR. So the purpose of this part of the presentation is to show you how to upload and submit your ADR. Let's do a quick overview of the client report. The client report includes client level data for all clients enrolled at any time during the calendar year 2022, regardless of whether the client actually received an ADAP service. In the client record, data include their demographic data, their enrollment and certification data, any health insurance or medication assistance services that they received during the reporting period, and their clinical data. Clinical data includes all CD4 and all viral load counts and dates for all clients. Again, please refer to the Preparing for 2022 ADR Reporting Updates and Best Practices webinar for updates regarding reporting client data in the client report. I also want to let you know of another new addition to the ADR manual on page 38, which provides guidance on reporting ADR services that may have some nuances. This box describes some common situations that you may have, such as what services to report and how to report reimbursements and program income. Now let's go over how to upload your client level data. As I mentioned earlier, your client level data will need to be formatted as an XML file. ADR ready systems, including Careware and Trax, will create a compliant XML file. Remember that since there is a schema change this year, you need to be sure that you're using the most recent version. If you need any assistance with creating your XML file, the DIS team is your go-to for XML assistance. So once you have an XML file, you are ready to upload your client level data. From the navigation panel on the left side of your screen, select the client upload link. Once you click on the link, you will be taken to the client upload page as shown here and will need to select the choose file link to locate your XML file. Once you have found the file, click on the upload link and it will take a few moments to successfully process the file. Once the system has processed the file, the status will go from pending to success. 
You will also receive a confirmation email stating that your client level data file was successfully uploaded. Now, one issue that you may run into while attempting to upload your client level data file are schema check errors, which essentially means that your file is not compatible with the system. To address the schema check error, click on the link that says, please click on this to view the errors. Schema check errors must be fixed in order to upload your client report. If you need any assistance with resolving schema check errors, again, contact the DIST team. Please make sure to include a screenshot of the list of schema check errors when contacting the DIST team, which will give them more information to assist you. Once the schema check errors have been corrected, you can re-upload your client level data file. There is also last month's webinar, Reviewing Your Data at Upload, tools within the ADR web system and the Check Your XML feature that you can review. Now let's move on with validating and submitting your ADR. There are two great resources to use during the validation process to ensure your data quality. These are the Upload Completeness Report and the ADR data validations document available on the Target HIV website. To generate the Upload Completeness Report, you will click on the Upload Completeness link under the Reports header. The Upload Completeness Report is an aggregate report that summarizes your client level data by data element and in a table format. The ADR data validations document provides information on the data validations for each data element and the types of validations you may receive in the data upload process. Again, we recommend you view last month's webinar, which goes over how to use this tool. Once you have completed the recipient report and uploaded your client report, the next step is to validate your report, which means checking your report for errors, warnings, and alerts. So in the navigation panel on the left side of your screen, Click on Validate. It may take a few moments for the validation results to generate. You can click on the Validate link again after a few minutes to refresh the screen. Let's take a moment to go over the validation messages that you may receive. Errors must be fixed or the system will not allow you to submit. For warnings, you can either fix it or if you can't fix it, you will need to enter a comment. For example, ADAPs may receive a warning validation message for missing data. If the ADAP is unable to collect those data, enter a comment explaining why the data are missing. Lastly, for alerts, please review and fix the data if needed. You do not need to provide comments for validation alerts. If you have any questions on how to address validation messages received in your report, please contact data support. The contact information for data support will be displayed at the end of the presentation. Let's take a quick moment to go over how to add comments to address any warning messages. As shown on the slide, this ADR has a few validation messages that will need to be addressed. Also, a great way to view which EUCIs triggered the validation is by selecting the expand icon to the left of each validation message. We recommend waiting to add a comment until you have determined that the file uploaded will be the final file. Validation messages once entered cannot be deleted. However, you are allowed to enter as many comments as needed. Once you have reviewed the validation messages and would like to add a comment to any warning message, you can click on the add comment link under the action column. Once you do, a tab will appear for you to enter the comment explaining the warning message. After writing your comment, make sure to click on Save. If you determine that some of the data in the client level data need to be corrected, you will need to remove the older file in the system and re-upload a new file. To remove an uploaded file, you will need to click on the Clear Clients link on the navigation panel. Next, you will choose the file you wish to remove and then select Clear Selected File. It may take a few moments to successfully clear the file, but once the file has been removed, you can upload a new file. 
Once you have reviewed your data quality and entered any validation messages, you can move on to submitting your ADR. To navigate to the submit page, you will use the navigation panel to select on the submit link under the workflow header. However, if you attempt to submit the report and receive the error message shown on the screen, you will need to review the report again. As stated here, you can review this information by selecting validate again. Once you have reviewed the report and all issues have been addressed, select submit again, and you will be taken to the submission section where you will see a text box listed for comments. We recommend entering a meaningful comment regarding your submission as HAB will review this comment after the submission period. After you have entered any comments, make sure to check off the box that states, I certify that the data in the report is accurate and complete. The final step is to click submit report. And once you do, you have successfully completed the ADR. Now let's end the presentation by reviewing ADR webinars and TA resources. Here is a list of past and upcoming webinars that will be useful in completing the ADR. In the fall, the DIS team and data support presented the Preparing for 2022 ADR Reporting Updates and Best Practices webinar. On March 1st, data support presented the Reviewing Your Data at Upload Tools in the ADR Web System and the Check Your XML Feature webinar. On April 12th, the DIS team will cover the basics of creating an XML file for the ADR with tracks and common issues grant recipients may encounter in preparing the client level data file. And on April 19th, the DIS team will provide a summary of ADR data quality in 2021. You can view this schedule and descriptions for all webinars at any time on the Target HIV website. Shown here on the screen are great resources to use while working on your 2022 ADR. The Target HIV website contains a lot of great information relating to the ADR. Here you can find the 2022 ADR instruction manual, the 2022 submission timeline, past webinars, and a lot more resources related to the ADR that I have included on the slide. I do recommend reviewing the ADR in focus series where you can access the ADR changes document. Also, ECF from the DIS team will chat out a link to the Target HIV website where you can find the listed resources posted. Let's take a moment to review technical assistance resources available to assist you while completing the 2022 ADR. The data support team addresses ADR related content and submission questions including interpretation of the ADR manual, HABs reporting requirements, data-related policy and validation questions, as well as instructions for completing the ADR. The DIS team helps guide new users on where to start. Also, they help those needing significant assistance to meet data reporting requirements, including making sure recipients' data systems collect required data, data mapping, and making sure recipients are reporting in the required XML schema. DISC also provides TA for the tracks, checks, and ECI applications, as well as addresses questions related to data quality, including analyzing completeness reports. The EHB's Customer Support Center addresses EHB's and ADR software related questions, such as navigating the EHB's, account registration, and access and permissions. For CareWare users, the CareWare Help Desk is the best place to find assistance with CareWare-related inquiries, such as generating the XML file from CareWare, creating custom reports, and viewing sample client summary files. Please note the current CareWare bill needed to submit the ADR will be released soon. Once the bill is released, you must ensure that, you're, that you update the new CareWare minimum bill or you will not be able to submit the report. I recommend signing up for the CareWare listserv for any updates on the minimum bill. As I stated during the previous slide, you can also find all of this information in the ADR TA brochure available at the Target HIV website. And remember, if you are unsure of who to contact, feel free to reach out to any of the resources listed here, and we will be sure to direct you exactly where you need to go.
Finally, to connect with and find out more about HRSA, check out HRSA.gov. I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for joining us on today's presentation. And I will now turn it back over to Debbie for the Q&A portion of the webinar.